Okay, and now for to mount the wheel, dynamic wheel onto the tube. So here is my first attempt to print wheel and as you see it's failed and it failed for a very stupid reason that I forgot to to calculate proper amount of plastic so the roll was slightly smaller than what I needed to to print the wheel completely. I was just hoping it would be enough but it did not. So over here you see that the belts so it's nice and nice and nicely in the cock. It's very useful to have like a print fail like that really because over here you basically can see how the alignment of your teeth how how teeth fit to the belt is it good or not good is do do your teeth go deep enough or just or it uh, engagement will be marginal, right? So, and uh, over here, over here, just give me a second to figure the bolts. Over here there is a channel inside with already inserted nuts in it. And again those are the very same nuts of M6 but 10 mm high M6 nuts which are sitting inside the channel. So this bearing block is actually bolted to the very similar nuts inside. I just like first before like going into this project i like removed this piece by unscrewing four bolts from the from inside the tube i removed this whole piece to see how this part is mounted onto it as it and the channel elevation internal is a channel elevation constructed in a way that if you have a 10 millimeter height nut it will just slide inside and will not go anywhere right so you, you still can survive with a regular M6 nut. You don't need to order 10 millimeter high nut, but uh, but it will be more difficult if you will need to remove the wheel and replace it with a different diameter and so on because it might fall out of the channel and end up, end up flying inside the hollow space of this piece, right? So I have another nut on this side and they are already you see that they are positioned relatively to the bearing block why is that because this is how the wheel itself have been calculated so this diameter nests is nested to this circumference of the bearing block so it m makes and ensures that the timing wheel will be absolutely centered against I'm just will be absolutely centered against the bearing block and against of your rot rotation axis right now I need a certain leverage to fully press it on okay and now it says you see it it sits by itself, just nice and tidy. Okay, and again, butter fingers. I believe those are 16 millimeter long screws. Actually, they're very similar to the dimension screws as those guys. Oh, 
too, good, gets itself in place. You hear this clunking? Okay. So, this was designed to be the height of the wheel and the thickness uh, over here in this area was designed in a way to be slightly, to be almost flush with this base, as you see. You can make it a little higher, right? Because it's basically where the board, board sits over here. So basically here is additional like three millimeter gap. So you can make it the wheel itself even slightly thicker by two millimeters or so. But there is a risk that due to some bending, it might rub a box. Okay, do click, please. Okay, I think this is ready enough. Okay, so you see this like nice leverage to spin the tube. And let's look inside. You see, so basically the wheel had to be quite cut it out from inside to accommodate this assembly of the bearing base, right? So, and you still can do like a height adjustment overall. You see this gap over here? So this basically, you can still move this whole piece that all, all the way that way if you need a balancing adjustment. But I mean, my telescope was already balanced for the setup I use, so I'm not worried about that. I'm just hopping it on. The only problem you will encounter if you set up and balancing will have no space for another screw over here because it will run out of a channel or length. All right, what's next? Next I'm gonna show you how to mount the rest of the system. Let's move a bench with the telescope slightly to the side. Here is fast and furious base of the telescope. As you see I mounted caster wheels at the bottom, which makes my life much easier rolling out telescope out of the apartment building. So, to drop in a telescope, what I'm going to do first. I'm going to put a belt on. And then, Inside. Well, cannot say it's easy peasy. Now is the most interesting part. So the the bearings might not you you, you might want to leave the bearings like this. It's slightly just slightly tight up that the telescope holds in place. Because this will affect how you will going to be balancing it out. Now, let me put the camera a little over to see the most interesting part. And I will move slightly to the side. with me. Okay, remember this piece is the most exciting part of this project. I just love 
nice and elegant minimalistic designs. So, as you see, it's a very calculated belt dimensioning. I used an online, online calculator and will project it will discount to figure out what belt do I need then I just went to eBay and figure out what lens might fit from whatever was available in the market. So what we have here the button wheel from what I see uh, my button wheel over here says slightly high slightly touching uh, top top piece of the Dobsonian mount so but when tensioning the belt this wheel move down slightly when I'm bef when, when I'm gonna be clamping I'm gonna push put a pressure downwards and forward to do simultaneous tensioning of the belt and of this plate of compliant flexing mechanism for the azimuth motor. Right. So I'm going to lock my wheels to help me with this. Check if the belt is nice. And now I'm checking, okay. The checking the wheel, perfect spacing. So it's almost centered. Could do it slightly lower, could do it slightly lower, but I will try it this way. Then patching in the bolts. And now what's left? Just connect a controller and you're good to go.